Hello, my name is Liz Bulbrook and I'm the Director of Nutrition for Bailey's Horse Foods. And it is with great pleasure that Bailey's are once again supporting the British Breeding for Charity events. This year, there are opportunities to enter your youngster for a virtual futurity, as in 2020, or attend a live physical event. All details can be found on the British Breeding website. At these events, the role of the nutritionist is to work alongside the vet to assess the overall body condition and muscle development of your youngster. And today I'm giving a brief overview as to what and how we'll be doing this. We cannot alter the genetic makeup of the horse but we can give it the best possible chance of fulfilling its inherited potential by attention to the genetics, the management and the nutrition we can allow for optimal growth and development. We know that genetics will influence distribution, numbers and types of muscle fibres within a horse and therefore to a certain extent breed determines what discipline horses are suited for coupled with their conformation. Muscle bulk and performance can be governed by exercise and adaptations in training, alongside nutrition, farriery, saddle fit, all will help with the management. The importance of a good quality balanced diet throughout a youngster's early years cannot be overemphasized. Providing optimum balanced nutrition will help towards each individual being given the best chance to fulfill their inherited potential. So body condition scoring and top line evaluation. This is about understanding the relationship and differences between body condition and top line and muscle development. And it's important when assessing whether our youngsters are in good condition. It's a good management tool for owners and it allows for adjustments to the diet to be made if necessary. Body condition takes into account overall body weight as well as a degree of fatness. Seasonal variation, as well as rainfall, can affect your grass quality and the quantity. And by having an understanding of body condition scoring and muscle development, it allows us to make changes in our management and dietary adjustments to be made. This can be particularly relevant post weaning, for example. Horses that are significantly underweight and lacking in muscle are more predisposed to possible poor skeletal development weakened bones and ligaments, which can negatively affect attitude and physical ability. Overweight and top heavy individuals can lead to potential unnecessary trauma on young developing limbs. This can then lead to potential growth disorders and limitations to their physical ability. So why are we using body condition scores and top line assessment as part of the futurity evaluations? By knowing the ideal body weight of our horse, this is necessary to determine how many calories to feed per day to meet the demands of growth and development and general condition. Body condition scoring is the best way to determine if calorie needs are being met. And at the Futurity Evaluations, we will be using the recognised one to nine body condition scoring system, where five is the horse that is in optimal body condition Below five could be illustrating that the optimal calorie requirements might not quite be met and scores above five can illustrate situations where calorie requirements are exceeded and this can then lead to youngsters becoming overweight. The top line assessment will help us determine if the horse's amino acid requirements, i.e. protein, are being met and therefore are we going to achieve good gradual muscle development. So these can be used as a management tool to give us an indication as to the suitability of the horse's diet at the time of the assessment, taking into account age and stage of development. So what does the nutritionist need to see when making a evaluation alongside the vet? With the virtual futurities, we'll be assessing the videos, looking at the overall body condition and the muscle development, requiring a view of the youngster from both sides so that we can evaluate the neck, the middle and the hindquarters, showing the body profile taken at an angle to the shoulder should illustrate the neck, the neck into shoulder, across the back, along the ribs, into the hindquarters. A view from the rear is required to show the shape of the rump. Obviously it's an actual fortuity, we can walk around the horses and get a clear view and assess all of these areas. 
For the virtual fraturities, the nutritionists can also review the static side-on videos from the other videos that have been submitted for the veterinary assessment. So, in summary, we will be assessing the body weight that the youngster is carrying, overall weight and fatness, and looking at some key areas, distinguishing between a distended belly versus fat. And we will allocate a mark on the evaluation reflecting objective assessment. We'll be looking at areas such as the neck, there shouldn't really be any crests in youngsters, hopefully not. We'll be looking at behind the shoulder, are there any fat pads being laid down? How much coverage over the ribs? and over the tail head. A growing youngster has a requirement for digestible energy to satisfy the demands of growth and development, as well as general body condition. We appreciate that the youngster is not the finished article. And generally, as a rule of thumb, we want to see gradual development in all areas. We'll be looking at the withers to the loin, over the hips and the hindquarters, down through the hindquarters to the thigh, looking to see if the neck has a smooth or convex top line and that the neck blends smoothly into the shoulder and the withers. The horse will build muscle gradually from the hindquarters, the crew and across the loins and lastly their back and their withers. A good top line and overall muscle development is achieved by providing adequate quality protein in the diet to support muscle development and function of the growing youngster. Quality protein, along with the correct balance of vitamins and minerals, is important to ensure strong skeletal development, affecting tendons, ligaments, bone density, as well as muscle development. Genetics of the individuals, short couple types versus longer leaner individuals, can also influence the initial appearance and development of top line. So what is the combined result? If we have a yearling, who's got a good body condition score of five, I is ideal. The top line is excellent. The development is good for the age and stage of development. And then combined with the veterinary score and evaluators, this youngster scored a very good 8.89. When taking your videos, if you're entering the virtual fraturities, remember that your camera is acting as the eyes of the veterinary surgeon and the nutritionist. If necessary, take your videos over a few days and all the shots that we require are listed on the website. Submitted videos need to be filmed in landscape. We don't want to see horses being lunged, they need to be shown in hand. And consider the background when taking the pictures so that you avoid trying to film on grey days because it doesn't show the animals at the best, but be aware of sunlight, shade and what we are actually going to see when we look at those videos. Also, it's very important how you hold the camera. If you tilt the camera too far up or too far down, it can distort the pictures and it can make a youngster either look too fat or to look too short in the leg and out of proportion. So have a few goes before you actually do your final filming and submitting for the fortuities. And if any of you have any questions, do please email nutrition at baileyshorsefeeds.co.uk or call the team of nutritionists on 01 371 850 247 option two, and they'll be more than happy to help. We're on hand to answer any questions you might have in advance of the fraturities, perhaps getting your youngsters ready in terms of their nutritional requirements and either after you've had the evaluation or on the day if it's a live event. Thank you.